Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here. So let's continue playing as the Ukraina, the Ukraine, Ukraina. So, as mentioned yesterday, someone wants me to say in every episode, when we pretty much begin, I should say something along the lines of, Slava Ukraini. Now I had someone attempt to help me with my pronunciation, so I'm... Say thank you very much to you, my friend. Um, but right now, we are in a little bit of a pickle. It looks like uh, we're a little bit in circle. Um, this isn't bueno, but really the only thing that we can do is attack and hope for the best. So, um, let's see what happens. And as we're attacking, we get attacked in the butt. I guess that's not really our butt. We're in Jassy here, but uh, from our flank. So, if anything... I'm gonna have to risk this because we don't have a lot of time left with this division and the actual Kingdom of Romania's division is trying to hold out to buy us more time for our own divisions and oh and of course this is a little bit left open someone in the comments said that this type of glitch happens that the AI doesn't exactly know where to put its divisions so it's a little bit of a glitch also we have a little, a little bit of something else too the Kingdom of Spain has formed under the Carlists, who are paternal autocrats under Javier the First, under the Kingdom of Sp the Spain, and they're in the Entente. Interesting. I I almost never pay attention to Spain. Now I'm sure most people don't ever pay attention to Spain either, but uh, unless you're playing Spain or someone close to Spain. But this is interesting. This is very interesting. They don't like us, and they're paternal autocrats. I guess they got rid of. Um, Alfonso the 13th, I believe is what his name is. Ooh, we're actually winning. Good. Oh. Well, they broke over the river. Okay, then. And it's weird to see that they have... Okay, I thought there was five Japanese divisions there, but it's really only one and then four regular Kingdom of Romania divisions. Good to know. So it looks like... Oh, the horses are dying. And we're getting attacked over here as well. Um... If you could... Oh, good, good. Please hurry up. We're about to die here. Please. I don't want to spill any unnecessary Ukrainian blood. Oh, oh thank God we actually did it. Oh, oh okay, okay. Oh, we actually got... We broke the encirclement. Oh. I did not want to start off this, this uh, playthrough like this. Oh. But right now, this world is going definitely okay. It's not as explosive as... As I would have liked. I would have liked to see a civil war in Spain. Um, at least we have the United Baltic Duchy left. Where we, where they were basically... They tried to rebel. The Latvians and Estonians tried to rebel. But what are they doing? They're still doing Germanization stuff. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Rely on local businesses. Sons of the Vaterland. Hmm. Balts to serve Baltic fleet. Cool. Ooh, we actually have another division. Great. We actually have another division, finally. So, obviously, we have a tiny, tiny bit about bit of manpower. Never mind. And we need more guns. And we do have a, a pretty good amount of artillery, which I'm going to keep making that amount of artillery. Mostly because I need it. Where are we? We're in Romania. Okay, so we're still getting attacked. But it looks like the other Romanian cavalry came by and help, was helping defend. But, whew. So, how is... Okay, someone helped me, my friend, yesterday who speaks Ukrainian, help me try to pronounce this guy's name. And, oh, Crisis in the Coalition, very good. So it's, let me, let me look at, look at this up. Pavlo Skoropatsky. Pavlo Skoropatsky. I hope I said that correctly. Right now, our current leader is Vesel, Vesel something. I forget his last name, it starts with a V or sounds like V, but anyways, Vesel is our leader for now. Because we just have a crisis in the coalition and we must have a succession question. King Vesel, as vigorous in its production of heirs as in running the country, has left the loyal succession up for debate. There are only two realistic contenders, Leo Stefan Habsburg or Daniel Skoropatsky. Daniel? 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 Neither are completely ideal, but... This question must be solved sooner rather than later. Well, I think you know who we're going to go with. We're not exactly chummy with the Austrians, but they don't really hate us yet. We're fairly, we're really chummy with the Social Democrats in the Reichspact in the German Empire. Triple Italian joined the Cairo Pact. Very cool, very cool. Uh, 
yeah, actually, the Austrians are set, like we said in the beginning, to embrace pluralism, so we'll see a thick Austrian Empire, which might not be ideal for us, just because we do want Galicia Lodomeria, but we'll see what happens. Also, I'm joined here by my cat named Binky, and he's currently sitting in my chair, so I'm not sitting down while recording this, but anyways. It'd be interesting to see if the Austrian Empire would go with nations within a state, because usually they go with a federation of equals if they choose pluralism, but we'll see what happens. So, we have an event. Prosvita is effective. The activities of the Prosvita movement, or the education movement, have had a demonstrably positive influence on our youth, with membership numbers soaring into the hundreds of thousands at least. Ah, oh, glorious. A number of young people are ready to defend their country, culture, and traditions. They will be perfect recruits for armed forces, 50 thousand more manpower. That's right, young men, enroll in the army. And we have a small typo here. There needs to be another L in enroll, but whatever. Look at those thick boys. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Also, I apologize if you can hear me slurping my coffee. I have coffee here, as well as my water, but I have been criticized for that before, so I apologize if that is not quite ideal. Anyways, so... Um, ooh, improved machine tools. Really, I'm just hoping we get into a war with some... The Reichspack gets into war with somebody soon. Because we need to get into war so we can get supplies because of the graciousness of the Reichspack and her allies. Uh, improved redness. Really, there's not a really good point to really, really research that stuff right now. If anything, it might be a good idea to maybe start researching fuel silos just because we're going to need fuel. Ooh, oh, good. Better artillery. Nice, nice, nice. Doing that. Fuel silos. Resource extraction might be good, but... I think maybe radar might be even more beneficial. So right now we're producing a good number of factories. But we just gotta keep producing. Like, frankly, when we go to war with the French, the Commune of France and the Union of Britain, because we're on the other side here of that war... We really don't need to do very much until we go to war with Russia, which will be a great thing. That hopefully will buy us some time. There's no guarantee that it will buy us some time. But hopefully that will buy us some time to continue to expand as well as to acquire more resources. Right, BB? That's right. Also, I did hit, apparently, 800 subscribers yesterday by the time this video goes up. So thank you very much to everyone who has subscribed so far. Like, if I'm past 800 or even 900 or 1,000, regardless if you subscribed... Thank you very much. Who knows how long I'll be on YouTube. But anyways, nice. Look at that Middle Africa. They even took out... What is this? Is this Mozambique? Or Zambezia? Zambezia? In Hambane and Gaza. Wait, Gaza? Interesting. That's a thicker Middle Africa. And they're led by Theodore von Hassel. Led by social conservatives, even though they only make up 9% of the uh, total ideology of who can vote. Alright, delay doctrine, good. More organization. Let us get some mobile defense for more defense and things like that. So as you can tell, I really don't want to attack too much. Yes, our soldiers can attack and do well, but... Oh well. Hmm. Try to be quiet when I die. Try to drink a little bit of that coffee coffee. Alright, there's really no... Oh, the Austrians sent divisions to... Huh. I wouldn't expect the Austrians to send divisions to the Iron Guard Romanians just because they're not a, exactly the same ideology. Social conservative and... Uh, oh, there goes that. And uh, national populists don't necessarily disagree on a, maybe a lot of things, but maybe on the approaches to do things. We're really... I don't know. Oh, the fall of Washington. Pacific conscripts have advanced towards and captured the symbolic cap. Ca the Pacific states took Washington? They broke through, and the flag of the PSA now flies over the U.S. Capitol. What the? Wow, this actually looks really kind of nice. Look at that. Nebraska. You have, like, avoided getting taken over somehow, at least on this side, from the PSA. Never mind. <laughs> oh, man, this is an interesting civil war. Who's who's winning or who's losing? Huey Long Dong. Mosley, ref Mosley reform plans. Interesting. So that's a lot of manpower, that's a pretty good amount of divisions. You guys have definitely a few less divisions, Marshall Plan, with less manpower. And the CSA has a lot of manpower and a ton of divisions, yeah. Um, we might see a very strong combined syndicate of America, but we'll see what happens. You never know who might win the Civil War here. 
Right, Bibi? But I'm very surprised to see the CSA actually, well, not the CSA, but the PSA, the Pacific States, actually taking out the federal government. What the? The Austrian Empire declared war on Iron Guard Romania, even though they sent divisions to Iron Guard Romania. What is going on? <laughs> what type of chess are they playing? You send divisions, send volunteers to a nation that you're going to declare war on. Guys, I, I what? But at least we're getting attacked. That's actually kind of nice. That we can maybe at least get a little bit of experience here. Just a little bit. Oh, it went up six. It's going up in the thousandth place. Or, no, that's, a, that's the hundredth place. Yeah, point zero one is the hundredth place. Because there's tens, hundredths, and then thousandths. And then tens, thousandths. God, I feel like I'm in fifth grade again. Oh. Oh, they're still attacking me. Very nice. Oh! Okay, so I thought last time Liberia joined the Reich's Pact, but okay, they joined the Inter Third International. The succession question, an heir to King Vassel. Unfortunately, our king has no children, and as such, theoretically, has the right to choose his successor. In practice, however, this decision is up to the Ukrainian government itself, and only two candidates are even being considered for by senior ministers. The nephew of Vassil, Vassil, Leo Stefan Habsburg, and Daniel Skoropatsky, son of our Hetman, are both contenders for the throne. Vin and Un support Daniel as they believe he will weaken Ukrainian dependence on the Reichspact by virtue of his lack of royal ties with the European dynasties. Leo, or Leo, despite his dynastic ties, has only only has support from Skordopatsky's opponents and employers, many of whom have serious connections with Germany and Austria. The question now is which is preferable? Well, as you can tell probably by the direction of our video, mm, European meddling or other European monarchs meddling in our nation cannot continue. Ukraine or Ukraina must be independent fully, so we must still bide our time, but let's go with Daniel Skoropatsky. And, oh wait, we need to do national focus before I skip the day. That was close. <coughs> Excuse me. I could do explosion on the Dnieper River, perhaps, but since we're kind of waiting things out, I think it'd be best if we do begin Ukrainian recovery. Social problems always provoke political instability. Lots of peasants join syndicalist, nationalist, or Russian separatist movements because of awful living conditions. If we want to save Ukraine from collapse, we should start a recovery program and help the poorest grain growers in central Ukraine, providing our population with the cheap electricity they require for this. We need cash. Awesome. Um, oh, we didn't have the explosion yet, but we do have the heir to the throne now. This is now EU4. We have an heir to the throne. And I hope his stats are 666, but you know, whatever. Six military, six administrative, and six diplomatic monarch points, mana points. Not in that order. Whatever. So we're still getting a little bit... Uh-oh. The game is lagging. Oh, no, 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 oh, it looks so good, it looks so good, no, why, no, I, I, I really want to see a campaign where the Middle Africa actually manages to somehow stay together, uh, even though, uh, just, Sudwest Africa, you lost it, Heinrich Kirschheim, uh, but, the more things change, the more things stay the same, anyways, so, our subs, They've been training like crazy. Go home. Let's go ahead and grab one of these guys and tell them to train now. A lot of dreadnoughts. Oh, some like cruisers to collapse in Middle Africa. Seems that the German lordship over Africa was far more fragile than we had thought. And we have two. Or I guess here. Let's get one sub out of there. Thank you. Thank you. There you under here. And you are a dis crap. A destroyer. <laughs> uh, destroyers aren't really worth it. They're really, really not worth it. But we're making this now. Improved fast battleship hull. Sultan of Egypt declared war on the Ottoman Empire. Very nice. Very nice. Persia. Oh, Persia declared war on the Ottoman Empire. We're still lacking some guns. That's pretty darn normal for us since we're just making civilian factories. All right. Everyone hates the Ottoman Empire, and probably everyone still hates the Turks today. Or at least most people do. Or at least maybe a lot of people do. You know, when they invade people. But whatever. That's not neither here nor there. Oh, I gotta love coffee. 
Alright, so how's this war going? It looks like the Austrians, even though they declared war, haven't really done a ton. They have marched in a little bit. <clears throat> That's good to know. Oh, I... Oh, wait, why are you both... I could probably just throw you into the fray. This isn't too bad. Okay, everyone is hating on Romania now. I'm kind of enjoying this. Now we can attack. Declaration of the Argentine Commune of the Frente Oberero Patagonico Patagonico have triumphantly, decisively won over Carl's Argentina. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, fuel storage. Very nice. 1938. Happy 1938, everyone. Let's go ahead and get a little bit more research speed to begin. Come on. Dominican Republic declared war on Haiti. Well, I know they don't like each other that much. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much the end of the national populace here, which is fine with me for now. Maybe someday, if we have... If we take over Romania, maybe we'll put the national populace back into control, but we'll see what happens. Oh, and there they go. Oh, right. So we didn't lose a division in that civil war... And this color went back to Iron Guard Romania's color, but Bulgaria immediately declared war on Serbia. That was a little bit unexpected, but it's the Balkans. What do you expect? Actually, by doing that, I think the Romania, someone had... No, no, Serbia needs to create the Congress of Belgrade. And they didn't do that yet, I think. End of the Romanian Civil War. Ooh, for good or ill, the Romanian War is over now. The general staff reported that they learned many valuable lessons regarding the nature of modern warfare over the course of the conflict. Army, Navy, and Air XP, 500 manpower, and plus 20 political power. Very nice. Also, I had my friend tell me about... Ooh, there's Pavlo Skoropatsky still here. All right. But there was a guy named Dandre Melnak, or something like that. Somewhere here. Oh, he's, we already have a national populist here. Huh. Gotta love coffee. Andre Livtiski. Stiski. Nice, we got our soldiers back. Igor. Mm, Mikhail Chubinski. Let's see, for ministers. We have Oh! That that's kind of the same way you pronounce this guy's last name. Vin Vinishenko. Vinish I, I I'm not even gonna try. No, I'm not even gonna try. It's Nope. Oh, there's Mikhail Bulga Bulgakov. Patriarch. Mstislav, Dmitri Donsov. Oh man, I can't say these words. <clears throat> I'm looking for that one guy that my friend told me to look up. Shrag. I can say that. Shrag. Mr. Shrag. Um, I don't see him in here. At least as a minister. Yeah, I don't see him. What was it? Dandre Melnak. Melnak. Anyways, we're beginning the Ukrainian Ukraine. Ukrainian recovery, and then I'll do explosion on the Nip, the Nipa River, however you pronounce that, so that we can ensure that we are national populist no matter what happens. Because I don't know if there's going to be an event where we cannot become national populist later, or no, no one's going to like it. And I just realized Lombardia here and Venice won. Totalus in the Barat Baratia commune. Huh. Oh, at least, at least Lombardia has kind of a cool focus tree. At least a little different. Um, extinguish the flames of republicanism. Okay. Denounce the golden Ambrosian ideas. Okay. Request the return of the Lombard crown. King of all the Lombards. Well, I guess I cannot ut unite Italy this way, which really, really kind of sucks. Which I think is really kind of disappointing, but whatever. 1938. Let's go ahead and grab some more defense. MG-34s and 8cm granite Werfer. Wir und Reisig. Ah, well, at least Romania's here. Um, Bulgaria's definitely winning. We're gonna see probably a thick Bulgaria. I hope, I kinda hope they join the Reich's Pact. Just because I don't want them to join Russia, because Russia's now, you know, they have a Tsar. So I really hope they join the Reich's Pact. That would be very good for us for now. Um, a stable and united Bulgaria. Absolutely, so taking power. Well, we'll see what happens. Bulgarization. Close the Sharia family courts. Interesting. Colonize Muslim regions. Interesting. Oh, where are we? Did I just lose my focus tree? Okay, no. Thank God. So, let's go ahead and do, do explosion on the Nepa River. The death of the king has come as a shock to us all, and now one question remains. In what direction will our nation travel in the aftermath? Just because I want to make sure that, no matter what happens, we will have 
a Skoropatsky in charge of our nation. Red Bink, that's right. So, we still have Hetman's army, which hurts us. Ooh, Brazil joins our Ice Pack. Interesting. Issue the Russian language, which we'll probably have. Um, Black Monday. And Language Immersion Project. Hopefully, when the Language Immersion Project finishes, that will f also take away the issue of the Russian language, which it sounds like it should, but you never know with mods. It should get rid of the issue of the Russian language if we're trying to make everyone speak Rush Ukrainian, but you know, I would like 5% more stability and as well as 20% more political power. But we'll see what happens. Zambia was annexed. Zambia. So, well, I don't know where that is. Sudvest Africa. Mm. At least we have the Union of South Africa here. I think they usually get into a civil war. Stability is pretty good. Mashriki Kingdom has capitulated. They're authoritarian democrat under James Herzog. A little bit of manpower. Very cool. Right now, we're constructing another civilian factory and then after th we're done with this set i'm going to begin thinking about producing some military factories because we could use a few more at least get us started on that so right now we got a little bit of artillery so let's go ahead and upgrade our fire support maybe this will hurt our artillery a little bit so we need 72 more but we do need less infantry equipment about by 300 but this will drastically increase our soft attack which is something we really really need and we'll get we will become 20 combat width for all those divisions that we're making so now we're really out of artillery which was probably a mistake to do oh crap that actually gave us a lot of that did i change all my infantry i should don't think i changed all my infantry to do that a new minister of security igor kistyakovsky has been our Minister of Security since 1918, but recently had to retire from his post because of his poor health. Faith and nation and organization of the Ukrainian nationals have immediately started fighting for this position because each party hopes to increase our influence, or their influence, over Ukrainian internal policy. We have to give both factions this post, according to the power-sharing agreement concluded before the elections. Vladimir or Chekhovsky? Chekhovsky. I'm going to choose Owen because we're in the Ukraine. We've got to support Ukrainians here. Yeah, we really... I probably should not have done that. Um, so now, really make a lot more artillery pieces. Because that artillery is pretty much the goal. Guns are cheap and easy to make, as you can tell. But artillery... I don't know about that. <laughs> but as long as we have a, at least a halfway decent army with artillery in here, we should do relatively okay, depending on what Russia really wants and how much they struggle with their enemies. Let's see. They haven't done anything about foreign policy yet, which is good. I don't know what Realpolitik does. It doesn't sound like it does very much. I almost always see the AI choose to go with expansionism, but, you know, you never know. Oh! Oh! Okay, Romania joined the Dona Adria Bund. Oh. Oh, boy. Oh, even Albania joined as well. I really hope I get an event to maybe annex at least a little portion of this, but I doubt I will since... Austria is going to reunite the Austrian Empire, which would be kind of a problem, but... Uh, oh yeah, we can still take out Poland, maybe. But I oh, align with the Austrian sphere. No! Uh, no. So, because of the way this is turning out, here is my updated plan. So, as we play as Ukraine, or Ukraina, Ukraina, we will eventually go to war with the Third International, which is fine. Totally fine. I'm not really expecting to get much in out of that. We'll probably end up going to war, war with Russia, which is fine. However, because we want our own independence, we must make sure that we take out anyone who objects to our own independence. That means if I have to stay in the Reichs Pact for most of the game, so be it. And, and if anything, if I jo I'm in the Reichs Pact and I can convince everyone else in the Reichs Pact to go ahead and declare war on the Austrian Empire when the time is right, to take out the Austrian Empire. Oh, there they go. <clears throat> and then, when you do that, and we have taken them out, then we leave the Reich's Pact and then attack the Reich's Pact from the back. That's the plan. How far we get? Well, I have no idea. Ooh, I should not have changed that to artillery just yet. But, oh well. And we go with explosion on the Nepa River. Cool. Let's go ahead and do um, German loan for electri electrification. Ask Germany for a loan. Well, I don't want to be too dependent on Germany. Ooh. 
more recruitable population. That'd be good to do. But let's do taxes for electric electrification first, just because this does hurt us, and the faster we can get rid of a negative buff or a debuff, the better. <coughs> Excuse me. We must use our own resources and raise taxes since there's no other way to get investment for the program of the electrification of the villages in the central Ukraine. We hope that our peasants will understand. So we get slightly more consumer factories for about three months, but we lose 10% stability, which really isn't much of an issue. Which means we really, really need to use these factories very wisely. Oh, and you're still here. Um, yeah, just kind of join up. If anything, right now... Oh, explosion! Today! At 11 a.m., while our King Vassel was relaxing on his yacht, an explosion ripped through the hole, immediately killing him. Our Minister of Security has just received a telegram from a syndicalist group claiming responsibility for mining His Majesty's yacht, stating that the action was a result of their exclusion from the democratic process. There was no chance to save our king, and already the country has been plunged into disorder. The new king, Daniel Skordopatsky, has promised to work with the new ruling party to suppress this syndicalist threat. Long live Daniel Skordopatsky and the Un. Oh look, now we're national populist. It's funny how things like that just just magically happen. Um, cool. Oh, hello there. Actually, I was gonna use this image for my thumbnails, but I kind of decided against it since I wanted to put in the actual Ukrainian text of the OUN or Organization of the Ukrainian Nationalists, you know, motto or representation. So I figured this would be a little bit more cool. Son of the famous Hetman has ascended to the Ukrainian throne. Hello there. Oh, we actually have some political power. We can go from export focus to free trade. That would hurt us a little bit, but really not too much. If I have 150 political power, what would I do with it? Let's see. Mikhail, Vladimir, Sergei Ostopenko. That's not bad. Alexander Shulgin. Eh, that's kind of a waste. Dmitry Donstov. Oh, that hurts our stability. But we do get more pl daily political power, which isn't terrible. Hmm. <clears throat> Justify war goals time. We don't really need war goals times right now. So, if anything, <clears throat> I, I, I'm just looking around at this right now. But what we absolutely must have is one of these play, one of these industrial concerns or industrial companies to help us produce more factories. Now. Azovstal is pretty good and for general construction. AMK is not what we need. And holy crap, I'm not even going to say that. The NUSK, the NUSK, is not bad, especially for trying to produce more and more civilian factories. Now, it does, doesn't give us a huge b bonus to military factories, but right now, uh, I could have used them earlier. I really want to start producing some military factories because we need them badly, so I'm going to go with Azovstal, just so we have a kind of a good balance. Yeah, we can't produce infrastructure right now, but I am nowhere near ready to produce more and more infrastructure. So, I mean, honestly, this playthrough has been a little weird, just because, ooh, nationalist victory in South Africa, for now. But we saw the United Baltic Duchy kind of collapse. We haven't seen Belgium explode, which is kind of unfortunate because we could have done stuff with them. We haven't seen a civil war in Spain, and Romania, the Iron Guard Romania was taken out, and they've joined, the other side has joined the Dona Idria Bund, as well as Poland. Bulgaria is killing Serbia, so this is a playthrough that I was hoping wouldn't exist, but the show must go on. But yeah, I wasn't expecting things like this. I was hoping maybe to get a little bit more support earlier on, but... Oh well. Oh well. We are making quite a few cars a day. We don't need that many cars, but I'm not going to take off just the single factory that we need. I still need cars no matter what, I think. What divisions use cars? Well, I'll let time go on for now as I'm checking out the cars. Does anyone use motorized? Recon support? Nope. Just the motorized division does. Even though I need to take out that tank because it's pointless for me to have a tank there. Alright, so... I'm gonna make an executive decision here. We don't need that. We don't. I need every factory to be on artillery, so we really don't need motorized right now. We need it for later, and I only have one division of motorized anyways, so I think this would be for the best if we can get more artillery instead of motorized um, production of stuff. We need some more support equipment as well, so that's not good. Um, do like that. Yeah, just 
focus on artillery. That's the main goal right now. We make plenty enough guns, artillery, artillery, artillery. Be like Napoleon and focus on the artillery. But we have taxes for electrification, which would be great. What is the Commune of France up to? As we're kind of speeding along, Department of Revolutionary Ideals. Honestly, it's probably Sweden is probably going to join the Reichspact if they're not already. Yeah, they'll join us eventually because Norway wants to take out Sweden, probably. And Denmark will probably join as well under Christian X. Interesting. Factories. Ooh, we lost one more factory, huh? Oh, there goes Japan. Now it's her ambitions. Transamir. Can you please attack Russia? Ooh, invite Japanese instructors. That's good to see, I suppose. Huh. Um, Russia is vulnerable. Please attack Russia in the butt. That would be, that'd be great. Final solution. Fully independent. Oh! Okay, the Kingdom of Finland has requested grain. The Kingdom of Finland has approached us regarding the procurement of grain due to their lack of resource. Due to financial constraints by Black Monday, we had originally, to the detriment of the Finnish, been forced to cut off grain imports, stranding the nation from its primary food source. However, as a crisis has begun to slow, e slowly ease, it seems that we can begin exporting it once more. Then again, it is also true that conserving grain for Ukrainians at home would also be wise so as to combat any other potential crisis. What shall we do? Well, I don't think we're... We really shouldn't have another crisis. Um, and if I can help the Finns, and they'll help us in war against Russia, that would probably be for the best. We'll sell the grain. Because we can always make more. We have Ukrainian farmers. It's like the breadbasket of America. We produce a lot of stuff, even though it might be all burned to the ground right now. It looks like the American Union state is not going to win. It'll be interesting to see if the CSA, as well as the Pacific states, perhaps... Um, maybe have a white piece at the Colorado line, perhaps? We have taxes for electrification. Very good. Let's go ahead and keep moving forward. We could embargo Germany, but I am nowhere near ready for that. Uh, we could do global Ukraine, which would help with manpower, but we don't really need that right now. We could go with ties with Germany, but we won't do that. Ostval renovations? We'll do splendid isolation. We're definitely not joining the Northern Wind. No, 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 no. Blue Danube. Very good. Ruthenian claims. And the Galician question. Commune cooperation. We'll probably do Splendid Isolation in time. Oh, we can't do this yet because we need to finish taxes for electrification. So, the Ukrainian Navy does give us stability for some reason. Not sure why. Let's do a global Ukraine. Ukraine has made great strides for rebooting its frail economy and political systems. And now is the time to pay attention to reorienting our foreign policy. Though we didn't have any serious opportunities to strengthen our position in Eastern Europe a decade ago, maybe the situation is different now. Population, more population, more recovery rate, and a little bit more political power. And that is great. 40 million eligible core population. This is really a divided America. Ooh, computing machine, very nice. Let's go ahead and get some encryption. That would be great. And seeing as some of these guys, they, they probably need to train a little bit more. Go ahead and train for now. That probably will cut a slightly into how much artillery, artillery we are producing a day, but I think that it would be very very worth it as we are watching Europe kind of become a little bit more unstable what the heck Russia pro-Russian coup in Lithuania Lith Lithuania despite insurmountable odds stacked against them the Lithuanian National Republic survived the war with the Reichspact and stood strong but their next challenge arose from within the oppressed Russian Polish and Belarusian minorities coalesced into a single anti-nationalist movement and they have struck led by KT <clears throat> The so-called Alliance for Liberation has seized control of Vilnius and reorganized the country into a Russian-allied monarchy. Experts believe that a Russian intervention was the cause for the Alliance's surprising victory despite their disadvantage in manpower and equipment. What the heck? They're a puppet! Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, I... Oh, God, no. Now we're cut off from the rights back. Oh, no. Now... Now, I didn't want to end the episode like this, but this is not good. That's a literal Russian puppet here. We are... Oh, we're still barely connected, though. Barely connected. Um... Oof, that's all I gotta say. What? Well, for the next time. Or this isn't terrible, but it's really, really not good. So, that means I need Austria to basically integrate all of its puppets. That way, I can ask Austria for some military access to go through their land a little bit easier. I think that would probably be best for us, but that's all the time for we have today. This has definitely turned out to be an interesting lead-up 
to the second Vault Creek. With anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord below, and I will see you tomorrow as we attempt to continue to assert Ukrainian independence. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great, great day.